Hey, this is Stacia, and we're going to take a look at my round two game that I played in Parma on July 28th of 2021. So the first game was against Demir, which you just saw. And now I'm going to show you round two against Jeffrey Geminian. So Jeffrey and I have been sort of longtime rivals. And um, I played against him two weeks ago with the white pieces, and we had a pretty exciting Smith Mora gambit. But this time I have black. So he opened with his signature move, C4, the English opening. And I play E5 against this these days, which is the most principled move. Basically says, hey, you don't want to take the center? Okay, fine. I'll put my pawn in the center. And he responded with the move E4. So I guess, you know, this is referred to by chess.com as the whale. <laughs> and Michael Jolson um, told me this is called the Bopinik variation with this kind of pawn structure. So, okay, and I have studied this in the past a little bit, so I had an idea of the setup I wanted to achieve. So I started with knight c6, he went knight to f3, I went knight f6, d3 defending his pawn, and now I went bishop to c5, wanting to develop outside the pawn chain, and he went h3, which is a bit of a slow move. So d6, bishop e2. Okay, so normally Jeffrey plays g3, bishop g2. So this is a little different than normal, but I'm sure it's fine. And here I castled, and he played a3. So, okay, first moment in the game where I stopped for a second because it looks like he wants to go b4. <laughs> you know, and, you know, maybe that'll be awkward for my bishop. I might have to move it up and trade it off, which I did not want to do. Um, so here I played the move a5. <laughs> but guess what? I actually made a flashcard of this um, position because a5 is not the only way to deal with this. You can also play this move, knight to d4. And this also solves our problem. Um, if he were to go b4 now, we could simply take on f3. The bishop will come to this square. Notice the bishop's not really good here. He's pretty much kind of block, he's blocked by the pawns. And then we go bishop d4, and the point is that we get tempo on this rook, and not only that, but I mean, look at this bishop. He's awesome. <laughs> so um, I guess he might get traded soon, but yeah. And the computer says now go a5, try to break the position open. White will have to spend a turn on b5. And black has an advantage here. Okay, so that's news to me. I might try something like that in the future. But after a3, um, I did go ahead and play a5. I mean, it does gain space on the queen side, and white often wants to try to get this b4 break in, so either that or f4. Um, so I felt, you know, a5 was not a bad investment. I do have to worry about maybe a knight coming to b5, but aside from that, I think it's fine. Okay, and the computer agrees, by the way. Okay, so knight c3, not wasting any time. Maybe he can jump into b5 at some point. I played h6. Yeah, I was actually worried about this pin here. I almost didn't want to play a5 because of bishop g5. So let's look at this for a second. Third best engine move. It says here, no worries, you can play h6. And if he were to... Um, go back like this <laughs> well I didn't realize this but we actually can play g5 in this position so mm, I don't know if I would have played it though I guess the point is mm, I don't know <laughs> uh, 
I was going to say that white doesn't have a lot of pieces by my king, but I don't know. This counts, doesn't it? Um, I feel like it would not take the knight very long. The knight could go too. So, wow, g5 looks pretty crazy to me. Now, white could sacrifice and black's like minus three. Um, so really this would have to be played. But now I have long-term weaknesses. I mean, it says black's better. It must be because our development is much better. You know, if you look at my knights, my knights are on the best squares. One of his knights has not moved yet. My bishop's great outside the pawn chain. This bishop hasn't developed, but it's already great. And my king is safe. And if you look at the white position, um, white has somehow fallen behind in development. So, and really doesn't have more space than black or anything like that. So black is actually better here, according to the computer. All right, well, anyway, let's go back. So he didn't pin me, so... I played h6 the next turn to not deal with that. And he played knight to h2. So he almost always goes for f4. I was kind of expecting that. I was a little surprised that he didn't castle yet. So, okay. Bishop d7. I was thinking about maybe um, going for b5 in the future, but also just getting my rook defended. Okay, and here was his idea to challenge my knight on f6. Um, I decided to ignore that and just put my knight in the center. So, you know, when things move in chess, it usually leaves something behind. So I was asking myself, knight h2, what does that do? Well, it leaves behind, you know, the d4 square. So now it's more um, desirable to put the knight there. So that's what I did. Now, he did take my knight, and his idea was that I take with a queen and knight d5. But I felt here I could simply go queen d8, defend my c7 pawn, and that's totally fine. Now, I will tell you that the computer thinks we can go queen h4 here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> queen h4. I think the point is that this bishop, you know, is on f2. So there's probably not time to take on c7. Let's find out. If this, yeah, it says 96. Oh, what a cool move. So we unleash this and we attack the knight at the same time. So if he tries to trade off the knight, you know, you have to contend with, with this. Queen takes f2. Uh, probably white's losing. Yeah, white's losing here. So, wow, 96 is a very strong response. So he actually can't take the pawn and instead should play something like bishop e3 to, you know, block that threat. Yeah, and the computer says, you know, then play c6. So he never does get to take c7. Um and then knight to c3, and this position's good for black. We can break with b5 or f5 now because we're better developed. So when you're better developed in chess, time for a pawn break. <laughs> Open up that position and let your superior pieces um, flex. I was going to say flex. I've never said that before in my life. Okay. Um, but anyway, I played the more natural looking queen d8. I didn't see that queen h4 idea. All right, and bishop b3 came. I did see c6, so I played it. The knight retreated. And f5. Okay. So I felt like my position must be good here because I'm better developed and I just got f5 in. So he took, I took... He took my knight. Now, I have to say, this feels like a mistake to me. He's giving me the two bishops. And not only that, but like, how is he ever going to get my bishop off the square? <laughs> you know, um, it's going to be a difficult task. 
um, it would take time. White doesn't have a lot of time. And he's aimed right at F2. So I thought this was a very nice development for me. He castled. And now I played queen to g5. Okay, so another uh, key moment. So at this part of the game, I honestly didn't know how to continue. I was probably thinking, it's probably my first longer think of the game. Like, a lot of times I feel like I can get a good position. I'm pretty good at doing like, basic things like developing my pieces, gaining space, castle, etc. Even the pawn breaks, I'm pretty good at orchestrating those. But one thing I'm not good at is figuring out what to do once I have a good position. And this is one of those moments. It's like, how do I, how do I improve here? Um, do I attack the king? Do I play for d5 or b5? Do I try to get more pawn breaks in? Like, is that the right plan or do I move my queen somewhere? And I determined that I should move my queen and connect my rooks. So the question then became, well, where do I put the queen? I really liked queen g5 at first glance, but there is um, knight e4. Now, I don't think I want to take that knight. Maybe I do. So my idea after knight e4, I thought I could go queen g6. So then I'm threatening to win a pawn, and I'm still threatening to um, take on h3. So, and then I thought, you know, maybe he could go knight g3. And I felt like, well, you know, I guess that's an improvement for me, I guess. <laughs> and I wasn't really sure. So let's look at this variation in the game he actually played bishop to g4 but i was most concerned about this move yeah the computer says um it says my move is fine and black's minus two which is excellent but it likes this even better so why on earth would it like this better so he would take with a pawn and then it wants rook f6. Oh, and now we're going to double. Yeah, and we're attacking the pinned pawn. And, you know, with the knight gone, I just realized this. The knight was the last piece that could trade off this bishop. I mean, now if he wants to trade off the bishop, he'll have to sack the exchange. There's literally no other pieces that could do this. So that means this pin is brutal i mean he can move his king here or here i guess but it doesn't feel like he'll be any safer over there so anyway um yeah this bishop is just an absolute monster now and the computer is saying yeah king h2 and we double up and this is going to be a very uncomfortable ride for white <laughs> Yeah, like queen f4 check is next. King h1. Okay. So we can even grab a pawn if we want. <laughs> so, okay, that was the plan the computer wanted. But in the game, oh, and I wanted to say that I played queen g5, but the engine gives an even better move. Queen g5 a second, so I did pretty good. But if you want to guess the top engine move, go ahead and pause your video. Yeah, so I think this move is instructive because I saw this move, but I didn't understand why it would be good. So let's look at it. It's the move queen to h4. Queen to h4, yes. Now, why is this move strong? Okay, well, we're, we're nestling our queen right by the king's castle <laughs> we're just you know we're just kind of camping out there now that's annoying for white white wants to get rid of the queen g set or g3 would lose this pawn can't do that you know um so that's not possible also we're menacing sacrifices this could something like this could very well happen now 
I wouldn't do it yet. It looks terrible, but <laughs> it could happen later. Um, and lastly, um, well, we've got pressure on F2, a lot of pressure on F2. So queen h4 adds an attacker there. Don't forget that pawn is currently pinned as well. So we have two attackers and one discovery on f2, and it only has two attackers. So that is the true reason why queen h4 is a very strong move here. But those other things are also uh, important. So, um, you know, probably white, sh I was thinking white should play like bishop f3. It looks passive, but at least it blocks the rook. Um, and here we could just do the same thing like rook f6. And if, you know, let's say here, um, we go rook g6. And if here we go rook f8. Yeah, we just bring our rooks over. We start lining up attacks on the, on the king side. And the computer says, you know, this is minus five for black. Like the attack is real. <laughs> like this is, this is very bad for white. Okay. And lastly, the computer, instead of bishop f3, which is the move I decided on um, in my analysis, the computer says this is the best defense, which looks kind of crazy. And now black has an insane tactic. So again, if you want to pause your video and find the win for black, Go ahead and do so now. Okay, so it's probably not totally fair because bishop g6 wins and bishop h7 wins. We just, you know, slowly open up on the pin pawn. Um, so if you said those, congrats, those do win. But I, I do like the flashy one, which is bishop takes f2. And, you know, it looks premature, right, because... The rook takes, and then it's like, uh, are we really going to sack our queen? Like, why do we do that? Well, the answer is yes. <laughs> We're going to sack our queen because bishop check, that's discovered check, and we're going to get the queen back. So the king moves away. We take a queen, and let's do material count. We are up the exchange and a pawn. So computer says minus 6.5 for black. So black's completely winning here. Okay, back to the actual game. So in the game, I did not find queen h4 and all that stuff, but I did find queen g5, which is second best. And he did play this bishop g4 defense. Now, I probably should retreat my bishop, which didn't occur to me during the game. Yeah, and you know, I was like, why do I want to let this bishop be awesome? But maybe he's not awesome because, you know, we can kick him with h5. And, well, maybe he's just vulnerable. But I decided to play this weird looking move. Rook a to d8. Yeah, definitely lost something with that move, but I had an idea. Takes, takes. Queen e2 was played, and here I decided to go ahead and break with d5. Okay, so black's still better, but not. I missed like the completely winning lines, which were just crazy attacks, but um, or just attacks, not even crazy attacks, just just attacks. Your run of the mill attack, um, but this d5 idea is still an advantage for black, and he played rook to d1. Okay, and I went rook to d6. So my idea was rook g6, which I don't think he saw. Um, he played here, rook d2. So he's just like really guarding f2. Uh, and here I decided that I want to go rook g6, but I was kind of worried about pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes d5, and that knight very well may threaten to land on e7, where the knight would fork my king and my queen. And 
But guess what? That's a bit of a ghost. It's a bit of a ghost because white is not going to have time for that. So I actually make a mistake here. Um, rook g6. And we shouldn't be afraid of what I just showed because guess what? Queen takes h3. Like I was eyeing this like crazy during the game. So I don't know how I forgot about it or miscalculated or whatever. But I do not have to take back immediately. Um... So that is the correct plan, is rook g6. Instead, I was like, well, I'm going to stop this idea. I'm going to take. I'm so smart. <laughs> and really, I'm not smart because there is a flaw with this idea. So pause your video again. Do you know what the flaw with this idea is? Because I am going to go rook g6 now. What's the flaw? Yeah, I mean, the flaw is this. Now he has this rook d3 defense. Like, a few moves ago before I traded, this square was occupied by a white pawn. So there is no rook d3. There's no queen d3. There's no anything on the third rank to defend the attack. So I basically helped him. Rook g6 is actually minus 3, and after this trade, Rook g6, it's equal. So talk about a mistake. Yeah, so I, I still have a lot to learn about chess. Pretty interesting. I guess I just totally missed that. Number one, I missed that the square would be vacated. And number two, I missed that this would be a useful defense. I didn't even It didn't even occur to me when I took that pawn, so... Um, so that is going to be a flashcard and next time it will occur to me. <laughs> That's the beauty of flashcards. Okay. Um, yeah, so Rook D3 and here we both, well, here I started getting in time pressure because I'm Stacia. Perhaps we've met. <laughs> All right. Now, wow. G4. I was like, wow. Um, I felt like that must be a bad move, and the computer agrees. It's a blunder, apparently. And now my attack is real again, minus four. Of course, I'm going to play h5, which is what I did. And he brought his rook here. Queen to f4. King here. Takes, takes. Hopefully, I got these moves right. I think so. Yeah, and I wanted to, I very much wanted to reroute the attack onto the H-file. Yeah, when this knight landed in, this was a huge problem. It defends, like, everything. It's, like, such a good knight. Like, it's hard to move my pieces around it. And just like my bishop, I have no way to take the knight. So we both have an excellent minor piece in the center. But at least I'm attacking. Okay, and this is the last move I gave. So, yeah, unfortunately with these OTB games, I don't always get the whole game. But I can tell you roughly that, I'm not sure how, but I had a, um, somehow this pawn was pinned. Yeah, I think it was something like the rook was still here and I went rook f5 over here I, I don't know but I ended up um, yeah I ended up getting my queen over here and he actually traded this off at some point and then there was some check later and my king went here yeah I'm really sorry I don't remember but I did get a checkmate I think it was on e3 later. So he pushed f3 and later that weakness proved fatal. That's what it was. I had my rook on h4 and my queen on h6. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, and I did that with under 10 seconds on my clock. So I'm very lucky to, um, to have gotten that win. But um, I do think I've played mostly well, but there's definitely some precision lacking, so yeah.
Um, well, anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this game, and I'll show round three tomorrow. So I will see you then. Okay, bye.